You guys, you're, make, you're making me shake. Stop it. Thank you. You gonna be here all the time, Woody? Are you throwing jokes at you and stuff? Throwing straight lines at you when you're rolling and make you all laugh again. Uh, um, first of all, it's off script, but thank you so much for being here, and uh, I love you, and we did some damage. <laughs> we did some damage in the 80s. I heard an expression the other day, I never heard it before, someone said, oh, they were 80s famous. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, son of a bitch, that was a different deal. <laughs> anyway, we did the serious business. Thank you, Academy, for honoring me with the Gene Herschel Humanitarian Award. It is a wholly unexpected honor, and I'm truly grateful. Special thanks to Bonnie Arnold, Davis Guggenheim, Bob Zemeckis, Bob Gale, the two Bobs, Steven Spielberg and Laura Dern. I, I, I actually know those people. This is so cool. Also, thanks to Bruce Springsteen for that song you heard at the end of David's piece, David's piece. It's sort of a personal anthem. No repeat, baby. No retreat, baby. No repeat. No, no repeat, no retreat. Baby, no surrender. And uh, I, remember, there's, a, there's a line in that, you burst it out of class, had to get away from those fools. They learned more from a three minute record, baby, than they ever learned in school. I don't know, that was completely true. But I did leave high school in the 11th grade, <laughs> sold my guitar, and moved to LA, like right over there in the corner of the Fox lot, in an alley behind Shirley Way. I moved and starved for a while. I'm not bragging, God forbid anybody who tries to do the same thing. I, I told the history teacher of mine, stop it. <laughs> no, no, not yet. Uh, uh, You, you wonder with Parkinson's, don't you? Uh, I told the history teacher of my plan, and he said, Fox, you're never going to be cute forever. I had no idea how to respond to that. So I said, maybe just long enough, sir. Maybe just long enough. Turns out we were both right. Years later, my son Sam insisted that the 30-something me earn my GED. And so I did. I got that covered. My career as a risk taker and an opportunist started to hit full stride. During my first days, then months, then years in the American film and television industry, I booked some jobs, ducked some landlords, <laughs> dove in a few dumpsters, and eventually I found myself unbelievably on a TV series called Family Ties. My boss on Family Ties was a larger-than-life, enormously gifted, bear of a man. And when I say bear, I don't just mean Teddy, I mean full-on grizzly. <laughs> Gary David Goldberg was my friend. I don't get me started. Was my friend and my mentor, and I still miss him every day. He taught me how to be a dedicated professional actor and a responsible human being introduced me to the concept of to whom much is given, much is required. I think that's John F. Kennedy's wording, but I also recognize the concept is taught to me by my parents, Phil and Bill Fox, who, by the way, would love this. In case you're wondering, Irish people cavell too. My mom and dad were kind and generous people, and, and the very values were very clear and visible to their core. I really didn't think they'd been given so much, so I didn't think I fully understood the lesson. They worked their asses off, putting all their love and energy into raising me and my four siblings, Karen, Steve, Jackie, and Kelly. But of course, they wouldn't see it as any hardship at all. When I left school and my home and my country, I wasn't leaving my mom and dad. I was just doing what felt right for me. They believed in my passion. My optimism, not so much. They were risk averse. And now a few short years later, I was on top of the world. I had a hit television show, two movies in the can, and it was all good in the neighborhood. This is when Gary started talking to me about a bigger neighborhood, about the obligation I had to help out 
where I could. Gary introduced me to other philanthropic mentors, all stunning examples of doing good as a major part of doing right and doing well. Bob Zemeckis, Bob Gale, Steven Spielberg, Jeffrey Katzenberg, Brandon Tartikoff, Peter Benedek, and Bob Philpott. These were strong men and also strong women helped me along the way, like Nancy Ryder, Nuzzy Sloan. Yeah, Nancy Ryder, gotta miss her. Judith Weiner, Nancy Gates, and Dr. Susan Pressman. And just when you think things didn't get any better, they got better, just before they got worse. I met Tracy better. Sam was born better. Eventually, we had three fantastic daughters, Aquinas, Schuyler, and Esme, better, better, better. <laughs> Somewhere in there, around 29, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's. I, told, I was told I only had 10 years left to work. That was shitty. That's what happened. The hardest part of my diagnosis was grappling with the, uncer with the certainty of, this, of the diagnosis and the uncertainty of the situation. I only knew that it would get worse. The diagnosis was definite, the progress was indefinite and uncertain. Tracy, Tracy made it clear that she was with me for the duration. I just gotten so much shit. Uh, but uh, 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 my young son Sam didn't, didn't know. He didn't have a choice. I entered into this, then I entered into seven years of denial, trying to make sense of, of it all. The kid who left Canada convinced that he would make anything happen, just by working hard and by believing, now had a tall order in front of him. I told very few people, and they kept my secret. Stop it. And then there were all kinds of doctors who helped me understand physical processes that were at work or not at work in my brain, as the case may be. Finally, I felt like I needed to tell everybody. I understood it would have a huge impact on my career. But this, by this time, I was doing Spin City, and I didn't know if an audience could laugh if they knew I was struggling. I had to figure out how best to deliver the news. So I told Barbara Walters and People Magazine. Remember, this was at the dawn of the internet. And in those days, if you wanted to get news out, you told People Magazine and Barbara Walters. <laughs> oh, for simpler times. <laughs> what happened next was remarkable. The outpouring of support from the public at large and the beautiful reaction from all of my peers in the entertainment business. All of you, thank you. And the, and the people that I worked with was, was transformative. Then I reached out to the Parkinson's community itself. Patients, families, their doctors, leading scientists in the field, and, I struck, and it struck me that everybody, it had struck me that everything I'd been given, success, my life with Tracy, my family, had prepared me for this profound opportunity and responsibility. It was a gift, as my friend George Stephanopoulos pointed out in the film. I referred to it as, the, Parkinson's is the gift that keeps on taking, gift that keeps on taking, it's showing up for a handful. Um, but it truly has been a gift. Once I became engaged in learning about the disease, every interaction, every new piece of information I gathered, every researcher or NIH official I talked to all confirmed that the science was ahead of the money. The answers could be unlocked with the right investments. It was also clear that an aging, underserved patient base could use some help in getting their message out. Patients let me know that if I could push, they would push, they put their weight behind me, sometimes shaky, and they'd push alongside me, and we would push together. This was the impetus for the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. I didn't want to call it that. I wanted to call it PD Cure, and I told Tracy, and she said, pedicure? <laughs> now I'm really in trouble. No, I'm not in trouble. Uh, so what was I going to say? Oh, well, yeah. There was nothing heroic behind what I did. It was the gathered forces of many people. As I considered downsizing my professional career to shift my energies towards finding better treatments and resources for the Parkinson's community, I sought help from many smart people, close to home like Tracy, and special friends like Curtis and Carolyn Shanker, who I want to get this thank you out, so I'm going to stop. 
uh, Curtis and Carolyn Shanker, who surrendered their Rolodexes to me. Remember Rolodexes? <laughs> they were 80s famous. <laughs> to help raise money for our initial grant, my producer, uh, partner, my producing partner, Nell Fortenberry, one of our first board members, jumped in and Oh, and a meticulous organizer of the battle plan jumped in and created one. Most notably, Debbie Brooks, my co-founder at the Fox Foundation, who took my, my motto, purity of motive, and, and, and became the catalyst and the engine that has driven us to our success. We, it's not a fall down, is it? Oh, no. I don't know what I feel worse about. Wait, drop it. Okay, you know, where was I? Uh, we, we assembled a board of achievers from around the w world, and over the next 20 years, outlined a path to, to a cure that we were working hard to realize. Even as we sit here today, with $1.5 billion in research so far. I am so grateful to all these people and thousands more who will make a world without Parkinson's a reality. I'm not sure I, I communicated all that well, but it's humbling in the deepest way to stand here and accept your kindness and your approbation when truly the effort is being driven by others, so deserving of this attention. I'm grateful to them and to you because my optimism is fueled by my gratitude. And with gratitude, optimism is sustainable. I can't believe I've been standing here for this long. It, it's a miracle. Now, I definitely can't walk and carry this thing, so I ask Tracy to once again carry the weight. 